what happens to an eyeball when it gets splintered. You got any idea how much blood jets out of a guy's neck? You've come back to us, Michael. She can stop the rage. Or me? We were attacked by a werewolf. I'm not listening to this. On the moors, we were attacked by a lycanthrope. A werewolf. I was murdered. An unnatural death. And now I walk the earth in limbo until the werewolf's curse is lifted. Shut up. The wolf's bloodline must be severed. Get me back, my head! Don't be afraid. No. Be afraid. Be very afraid. Welcome back, everybody, to the Retro Blood. As we start off a new month here in the month of November... A month of giving, a month of Thanksgiving, a month of retail hell, and of course the Retro Blood is having a month of werewolves, brother. That's right. Mm -hmm. If you like full moons, if you like hairy beast, if you like hairy from the inside and hairy from the outside, this is the month for you, brother, because the whole entire month of November... The Retro Blood will be talking about some werewolf movies. Not all of them, because there's a shit ton, but we'll, we'll talk about a good amount of yeah. them. Uh, but up next, up first, as well, too. If you all like Red Riding Hood in a uh, uh, different light, if you all like uh, wolves that kind of remind me of the wolves from Twilight, um, if you like wild grandmas, and if you like uh, 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 Ro- a girl named Rose who is like Little Red Riding Hood but not this is the review for you brother because the Retro Blood is talking all about the company of wolves J. Allison James Con, what's happening Allison what's up man so I just want to know are you uh, hairy on the inside or hairy on the outside brother I'm hairy all over all right. Yeah, me too. I'm Harry both. I'm mean, fucking on the, inside, on the, the outside and the inside, brother. Okay, <laughs> I'm ready to go. All right. Yeah, yeah I was like, what this the is, hell uh, does that mean? I'm still confused on that. This is uh oh, we'll talk about it. This is uh this is a uh, um, it's gonna be a weird show for us because we've never done a movie like this before. Yeah, that's kind of new. Um, like this is kind of reminds never. Me, yeah, it kind of reminds you like the this, dark. This is like crystal. a real movie. Yeah. Well, well that's weird okay i but i mean i guess i could see how you could kind of say that but yeah it's like a um this is like a this is like a like an adult movie you know what i mean it's like yeah. a, what they call it now uh, elevated horror that's what this oh. is okay yeah so it's it's not it's not surface level like most of the stuff we watch yeah. this is no zombie three that's for sure <laughs> that's for sure i guess it's, i was what you mean this movie has a lot of deeper meaning to it of the, of it, the horror. It, I think it kind of does, yeah. Um, okay, good. Maybe you can help me yeah. out, brother, because me, I'm all about the surface, so it might be a little tough. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like I feel like to really do this this show correctly, this movie correctly, we should really have like um, like a woman on the show. That's true. Because I really think we're missing out a lot of the context on this movie because uh, you know because well, we're we're the wolves, right? We're the werewolves. Yeah, we're not. Like, yeah, it's true. Yeah, we're the bastards. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I'm because yeah. I, I think I really didn't get it because I, I felt I found myself pulling for the werewolves through this whole entire movie for the most part. Yes, even though I guess we were the heels. I guess maybe <laughs> yeah, maybe we're definitely the heels. maybe we're, we're the, uh, the we, heels. We, yeah we were the tweeners. All right. <laughs> you think so? I guess I don't know. I don't, know. I don't think there's any tweeners in this one. You know, I did watch this with a woman. Does that count? You know, she didn't really give me yeah, any yeah. insight on it. She just said, "Hey, watch it." <laughs> That's all she said. Okay. Yeah. Well, so. He was right. a little distracted, but uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, you know, Wolf Month starting off um, a little different. You know, I guess if you take the if you take Little Red Riding Hood, mix it in with some Wizard of the Oz, and add some uh, 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 yeah. uh, Dark Crystal shit in there. The Dark Crystal shit is the puppets mm-hmm. at the beginning. That's what it reminded me of. Oh right, yeah. yeah that's what that's what I meant. But the, the and kind of like the filming style is the same. I like it. You know, add some fantasy, some Harry Potter shit in there. You know what I mean? Got this movie Harry Potter shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like the sets. I can see how you would yeah. think that. So it's a, it's an interesting movie. We'll get, we'll get into it in long form. So it should be. Uh, they, but you're right. This is like a first for us, you know. But I don't mind first for us, you know. You know, we've done wild, weird movies that like 
that are like horror based movies that are like are mm-hmm. but they're not like you know they're like a slasher they're like guts and stuff on it but it has like a creepy yeah. overtone like remember we did that movie possession remember that that's true that's <laughs> Yeah, before this movie, that was the most highbrow movie we did. Yeah, exactly. So I was like, yeah. fuck. And yeah. then, at least this one was a little bit easier to follow. That one was just fucking intense. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still having nightmares of that one. Yeah, and the Possession was a thing. Yeah. It's in the archives. People listen to it. Listen, yeah. to, listen to Possession and, and uh, watch it, I, I guess. Yeah, I'll try to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, this November should be pretty fun. We got a lot of stuff in store for everybody. Um, we got a lot of werewolf movies. We'll get the whole schedule at the end of the show, and we'll talk yeah. about the special lights out we're doing too. But um, I just want to say um, I'm still a little hungover from the Halloween episode. How, how about you, Allison? Ah, uh, man, I drink so much water, I don't really get hungover, so I'm still powering through. But yeah, it's uh, still uh, it's still a thing in the back of my mind. The the Halloween episode. I was going hard on that episode, some, brother. That was some intense partying. That was some intense partying. Nobody can party like the retro blood. Speaking of partying, yep. let's get Demons, into the yeah. Uh, yeah, yes, <laughs> demon parties. Well, imagine imagine these two movies mixing together. Holy Ooh, shit! Yeah. So speaking of uh, uh, partying and getting stuff going, uh, let's talk about the history segment for this week. Uh, like we do every week on the retro blood, we talk about what has happened in the world in the pro wrestling and the metal music around the release date. So this movie actually was released. Kind of like the same time in the Toronto and UK. I couldn't really find a, mm-hmm. uni- a, a US date that this came out. Uh, but we'll just talk about the Toronto one. So, and, you know, the Toronto and UK are pretty, you know, they're only like a couple days apart. But I like it where the Toronto date, this, uh, <laughs> this premiered at the Toronto Festivals of Festivals, Allison. Festival of Festivals. Yes. So how does that work? So is it like a? <laughs> <laughs> how does that... <laughs> is that like is that like Bon Jovi Day? Like what 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 is this? What is, is this like the best what festival the fuck ever? What does that mean? I have no it's idea. A, the festival of festivals. Yes. So it was like so you have all the festivals and then you have a festival to celebrate the festivals. Yes, this is the festival of celebrating right. other festivals. All right. And we're gonna show this. Right, fair enough. Story. And, we, yeah. and we watched in Company of Wolves. Yes. At the Festival of Festivals. Yeah. And this right, happened on uh, September fifteenth, nineteen eighty four. All right. So you know, I mean, fuck, bro. Like we would have got the little flyer in the mail or on the radio saying Toronto is having the mm-hmm. most extravagant festival of all time, the Festivals of Festival, brother. And we're gonna be premiering mm-hmm. the Company of Wolves. You know what I mean? And we're like, oh hell, we got to be there. And for I that. was like, well, fuck, brother. I mean, we already we we're there. Like, we got press passes and everything. You know what I mean? We drove the Trans Am up there. So. Yep. Got through customs. Yes, but I say like fully. Yes, but you know, speaking of driving up to Canada, we'll start with the metal mm-hmm. first because this is this is probably like the one of the best parts. So the band Queen, how do I say Queen's right? Queens Reich. Queens Reich, brother. They came out with their. Queens Reich, what you're trying to say. Yeah, they came out with their album, Warning. Mm-hmm. Um, they actually came out with this album September 7th. So we would already be having this cassette, brother, in the uh, in the Trans Am at the time. We'd be playing it. And I actually really like this album. I think it's pretty good. Yeah, these these uh, first four or five Queens Reich albums are fantastic. I really like this album a lot myself. The Warning. Yeah, The Warning. Yeah, I think they're, mm-hmm. they're pretty. Uh, I mean, it's it's pretty rocking. It's kind of like, what do you what do you what you what do you, you, you say their styles like? It's not necessarily it's power like, metal. yeah, okay, power metal. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, yeah, a little bit of For power sure. metal. I would say, yeah. Well, I don't know, man. So there was this song I heard by them. I believe it wasn't on this album. I believe mm-hmm. it was on their 1988 album, the uh, Operation Mid Crime. Uh, yeah, Operation Mind Crime. Yeah, that's a good oh, album too. Yeah, Mind Crime. Sorry, and. It's the song I don't believe in love. That's totally a fucking hair song. I never don't have t- and I never will. Yeah, that's I a never song. have and I never will. Never will. Yeah, that's a good song. I was like, that's totally a fucking hair song. But this song "Warning's" pretty good that they they do yeah. on this one. Well, that's kind of like how should I say this? Like that was like their way in i guess like so yeah. like queens reich is like um they're like well i guess more than power metal i would call it like progressive metal 
So they're kind of like the same kind of band as like Fate's Warning, which we've talked about before. Okay, yeah. Um, like I like Fate's Warning is a band that I liked a lot. Uh, Dream Theater, I would say Dream Theater, Fate's Warning, Queens are like the three big like '80s American progressive rock band, progressive metal bands. Before there, were, you know, before there was a more progressive metal bands like there are now. Queensryche, Faith Warning, Dream Theater, those were like the three bands that were around at the time. Uh, this is a really early uh, Queensryche album. Um, and it doesn't really sound the way Queensryche was supposed to sound. Like apparently when they record, like I read somewhere that, that they, they recorded this album and then they gave it to some guy to mix it um, who didn't really listen to hard rock and he didn't know what it was supposed to sound like. So he just made it sound like you know, like an eighties, like rock album. Yeah. Um, so it's supposed to be heavier than it is. Interesting. But it's still really good though. Yeah. Um, it has really good songs on it. Well, um, the, the, the what I like about it to me, it kind of like mixes a little bit of the both. Like you get some of the glam stuff out of them, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But you also get really good, like guitar riffs. And I think the guy is singing is really good. Like, I think he does like the high pitches very well and he can keep a melody pretty yeah. well as well too. Well, yeah, you know, I love that. You know, I love that high pitched, like Rob Halford of Judas Priest, King Diamond. I love that high pitched metal singer. I just, I think it's just cool. Yeah. And I just love that stuff. Um, and, and Jeff Tate was really good at that. Um, yeah, this band was really, really good um, up until about, I don't know, 93, 94. Yeah, kind of fell off a little bit. Apart. Yeah, yeah kind of fell off, kind of fell apart. They all started losing members, just like a lot of bands do. And, but yeah, I mean this at this era. I mean this is good. Um, Operation Mind Crime is probably like their, you know, their prime. Like you know, they probably that's probably the best album they made. Yeah, um, and yeah, that's when about when they started getting big too. Because I saw them on the next tour that they did for uh, Empire, which was a huge album. They had that song Silent Lucidity on it, which I'm sure you've probably heard in the grocery store, if nothing else. Um, it plays on like Muzak all the time, but um, but that was a huge hit for them, and um, they got so big they were playing like arenas. I saw them with Suicidal Tendencies opening. Oh, that's be interesting. Um, in an arena in Charlotte, um, they played Operation. The, they played like the first, like an hour of like you know this stuff, and then Empire, and then they played this. Then they did like a they had like a set break. And then the second half of the show, they played Operation Mind Crime in its entirety with like video screens and stuff, and that was really cool. Then they did an encore. It was a really good show. Um, I think there's one of those shows on the on the YouTube's uh, full show of that if you want to if you guys want to see it. But uh, but yeah, it was a great show, great concert, great band. This is a great album. Um, have you heard? I mean, obviously you've heard Mind Crime, but have you heard any of their other albums besides this one? Um, I've only heard this one. The warning and the the mind crime. Those are like the two I pretty much like mm-hmm. focused on. Because I don't know where like the song yeah. I was just telling you about the never believe in love. I don't know where. I think I was like watching videos on YouTube or something. Like something happened where that song came on, and I was like, oh, what, "What's going on over here?" You know, this song is pretty catchy. You know, and then I started mm-hmm. doing some research on the band, and I was like, "Well, fuck, man!" Like they're they're made in like 1988, or that, that that's when that. Uh, that mind um crime one came out it was 1988 i was like well, yeah, fuck. 1988 yeah. i was trying to line it up with some mu- movies we had coming up and it just so happened that this movie that we picked out for the wolves month they had the seat of the warning mm-hmm. so i was like okay we definitely got to talk about this band because i thought they're pretty good and i didn't realize when i'm doing some research here that apparently they they were nominated for a couple of grammy awards as well too mm-hmm. for for their, yeah. for their couple albums yeah, I think they were nominated. I don't think they've won one, but they were nominated. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like the, their music is all really good. Um, their uh, their next album, The Warning, is also fantastic as well. Um, but yeah, I really like um, I really like this album. Their their first their EP is just called Queen's Reich with Queen of the Reich and uh, Lady Wore Black. I believe is on that. Um, it's it's heavier for sure. Like it's just definitely like more. Like you might like it a little better because it's more rock and it's a little bit heavier. You could tell this is not like the heaviest thing in the world. Cause they kind of like when they, like I said, when they mixed it, they kind of toned down what it sounded like. So I, I'd really like to hear a version of this. that's remixed the way the band wanted it to sound, if that's even possible. Well, I mean, it just depends but, if they ever wanted to remix it again, but 
I don't know, man. Sometimes those remix could be a little tough. You know? Sometimes remixes can ruin things. Yeah. Sometimes they turn out pretty good, Doug. You never know. But sometimes uh, they turn out pretty good. This know? is a good. This is a good one. We'll play a song at the end of the show. Show everybody what the the Queen's Ride's all about. But like I said, they're pretty good. Um, you know, they do have a couple, you know, different history about what they were uh, doing at this time. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, like, this is definitely a pretty fun band. We, I could definitely see us playing this in the, the Trans Am of what was going on. On the way up to uh, the Festival of Festivals. The, yes. I wonder if they, they're they probably playing there too, brother. They're probably like, yeah, we, maybe. we're already booked. Maybe. I wonder if we can get a, uh, a funnel cake at the Festival of Festivals. Uh, I don't see why not. I mean... This man, fucking I, I love uh, the funnel cake, man. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm pretty sure there's a bunch of funnel cakes over there at the uh, the, the the company of wolves village. Mm-hmm. And I mean, yeah, I, I I bet they I bet so I bet they had a funnel yeah. cake maker in that yeah. village. That village is pretty cool. I mean, uh, barring all of, like the wolf murder, all, everything else in that village is pretty cool. Yeah, and I was gonna well, I have some questions when we get there okay. about the wolf <laughs> village or the surrounding town, <laughs> but. Uh, yes. <laughs> But when it comes to their pro wrestling, uh, you know, I know like, so this one is pretty interesting. So yeah, I found a mid Atlantic show, which is basically Uh-oh. Jim Crockett promotions before they, uh, would go the whole WCW route, mid Atlantic promotions, brother. And this show was pretty good. Like you actually can find this on the Peacock. I think it's season two, episode 27 or something like that. And it happened on mm-hmm. September 15th. It actually happened on the day that this movie premiered at the festival as a festival. So, you know, obviously we couldn't have done both. But, you know, if we would have had a, uh, you know, a time warp machine, we probably we saw both. But, you know, this one did air on TV. So maybe I put it in the go to VCR, record it. But it was the Mid-Atlantic show, September 15th, 1984. And the show was okay. Um... You know, a lot of a lot of wrestling, like you know, a lot of wrestling TV shows at this time, they would have you know certain angles, you know, but the, most of the matches were all pretty much squash matches. So, mm-hmm. but I'll go over the card really quick for you. So we have Mark Youngblood versus Paul Kelly. Do you remember Mark Youngblood? I do. Um, I remember. Well, I remember him, and I remember Jay Youngblood. Yes, they're like a tag team for a while. They were a tag team, yes. Yeah. So Mark, uh, Native Americans, I think they were, yes. weren't they? Yes, and Mark Young, but he was like the bigger of the two. So yeah, so he was there, and I like it where I, I believe the uh, uh, I don't remember the announcer's name at this time. Oh, what was his name? It's escaping me, but like I like it was like we're gonna have an exciting car for you guys while fucking Mark Youngblood sitting there with the headlock. <laughs> mm-hmm. So Mark, exciting, yeah, yeah. very exciting. So Mark wins with a crossbody, and the big the big plot of this show is they're talking about the United States Championship Belt Tournament that's going to happen in Charlotte, North Carolina. All right, mm-hmm. and the reason we're having this tournament is because there was a match between Ricky the Dragon Steamboat and one Wahoo McDaniel. And there was a big yeah. controver- controversy in this match because there was a chair involved. And and, and I believe it was... Um, I believe it was Steamboat being hit with the chair. All right? And then the referee reverses, tried to reverse his decision. But the, I, guess, I guess Wahoo picked up the victory because of the chair. But then a referee found out about it. And there was a big controversy... So we had an interview with Ricky Steamboat, and he said that the uh, the NWA board of directors that are controlled of Mid South sent him a letter in the mail. They couldn't do it to his face. They sent him mm-hmm. a letter in the mail telling him there's going to be a tournament for his belt, and he has to go through 16 other men to get the belt. So the. So okay, so he has to be in the tournament to win his belt back. Yes. Okay. Hmm. And you want to hear fair. the uh, the uh, participants in this? Oh uh, yeah, who's who's in this tournament? So we have the one and only Dusty Rhodes. Okay. Yeah. Ricky Steamboat, he's in the tournament, like we said. Black Jack Mulligan, Jimmy Valiant, Barry Windham, Mike Rotunda, Carlos Colon, Mark Youngblood, Tully Blanchard, Wahoo McDaniel, Assassins One. Ivan Koloff, Allison's favorite, Don Cronardle, 
Cowboy yep. Cowboy Ron Bass. Yes. The Raging Bull and Superstar Billy Graham. I mean, that's a pretty good tournament. Yeah, I'm guessing that uh, Tully Blanchard wins it. Uh, I didn't look it up, but I, I'm well. I mean, oh. they were they were pumping up the two Ricky Steamboat and Wahoo McDaniel has like the two main people, but uh, I didn't look okay. to see who actually won because this tournament is happening in October of the seventh, nineteen eighty four in Charlotte, brother. So we would definitely would have been there. That's for sure. Hell yeah, we would have. So, but I mean, you could look it up who won. Why I talk about the rest of this if you want. Let's see. Then after that, we have, uh, like I said, we got that Ricky Steamboat interview. I did like during the interview, he's like, I'm going to train hard. I'm going to gain like 20 pounds. And I was like, you're going to gain 20 pounds in a month? Fuck. They must have some good That's steroids back in the day, brother. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, damn. And then he's like. That is a lot to, that yeah. is a lot to get, gain in a month. I was like, I don't think he, well, he was pretty jacked. So I was like, can this guy get any jacked? So, um, <laughs> And it was crazy that um, like he was like, I'm going to go through all 16, but all I care about is that Wahoo. I'm going to beat him down. So now we have the tag team, the Mid-Atlantic Tag Team Champions, the the Long Raiders. All right? Right, the Long Raiders. Yeah, got it. Bart and Ron Bass. They're like these two big jacked-up cowboys. All right, they did. They mm-hmm. won by a, with a, a squash match, and they won by a backdrop. <laughs> and then we, and then we have uh, the the uh, the sports entertainment section uh, 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 part of the night, where we have Dusty Rhodes versus Nikita Koloff in a arm wrestling match. Oh, you had me, then you lost me. Did you? Are, have you so, ever? Well, oh, I yeah, mean, yeah, Nikita well, and versus say? Dusty. But, yeah. Well, we had Nikita versus Dusty, but they're not actually wrestling. Well, what's more wrestling. manly than an arm wrestling match, Alice? How many arm uh, wrestling uh, matches have you won? Uh, well, probably none. Yeah. So our boys yeah, over here none, are doing the most oldest sport known to man, taking their two giant biceps and pounding <laughs> them against each other. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> sure. So we have uh, Dusty. So- yeah, he comes out here with Barry Windham. All right, because, you know, Barry Windham hasn't turned heel yet. This is 84, brother. And then we have Nikita with Ivan and Don Cronurdo. You have any great Don Cronurdo stories, Allison? I don't. Oh, okay. I don't know if I've ever seen Don Cronurdo really wrestle. What a man. Um, and we have um, J.J. Dillon. He was on commentary, too. And so the big gimmick about this was Nikita. Okay, so <laughs> listen. I know Jesse's a big guy, but yeah. he's not necessarily known for being strong. You know, when I look at Dusty Rhodes, I don't say, yeah, that guy's powerful, <laughs> you know? And then when I look at Nikita right. Koloff, yeah, this guy's jacked the shit, you know what I mean? He's fucking eating beef, you know what I mean? And so, like, Nikita had to cheat to beat Dusty <laughs> in an arm wrestling match. And then, like, they were, because he, he held the table, you know what I mean? With his, his, his free arm, he held the table. And then, like, they're all complaining. So Mike Rotunda comes out with some string, and he's like, let's tie the other hands behind the back and have a chew contest. So that's what they do. And then Dusty Rhodes beats him in the arm wrestling contest for a fair. Because, arm- you know, Dusty, he's the power guy. He could beat anybody at an arm wrestling match. So then the, the wow, heels. That, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so then the heels get all mad and they start beat, beating Dusty's up and stuff. So it was something to well, see. Of course. But it's weird, though, to think that. Yeah, because when you see those two together, you don't think that Dusty's going to win an arm wrestling match. Yeah, it kind of Nikita Koloff. It kind of reminded me of the uh, Triple H and Scott Steiner arm wrestling match. I mean, except you know, except well, those, those guys are too buff. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say they're both pretty jacked, but yeah. I mean, Dusty was never really jacked. He was never. just he was just a big he was dude. just like the underdog. Yeah, he was just a big guy. So then, uh, so then Barry and Mike they they come in and help Dusty after he's getting beaten down. So, so then 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 we get like then we cut to like a pre tape of Barry Wyndham driving around in a Corvette. All right, and he came out without a shirt okay. on. Mm-hmm, you know, for the ladies, and yeah. then we see him in a squash match. All right, and then I don't know what this segment was, but it was fantastic. So we hear from the. Zamboni Express. 
You ever heard uh, of the Zamboni Express? No, and I'm kind of wondering if people in Charlotte knew what a Zamboni was. I don't know, but it was two jacked up black dudes, so I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because the Zamboni is like that thing you drive or you ride around like to clear the ice at a hockey game. Yeah, that's what they were. Right? Right. Two jacked up dudes uh, killing hockeys. All right. All right. Sure thing. So the best part about this is Paul Jones. He's like their manager. And Paul, he like lost his train of thought when <laughs> he was introducing him. He's like, yes, right, everybody. I have the Zamboni Express here. They are going to. I have the Zamboni Express here. And they are going to destroy any team. The Zamboni Express. And then the guy yeah. starts talking. That, that's what the promo was. <laughs> I thought that's the whole thing. That's the okay, whole thing. I got you. No, no. Well, that was Paul Jones' part of the whole thing. And then the, okay. uh, the two guys go and, and, and uh, cut their little promo. They just said basically put Mr. But before their names. So uh, you got to see it. It's kind of... Uh, <laughs> It's just so yeah. random. The, the the promos you could tell that there's no script for this one. We're just we're just flying off the rocker with this one. Oh yeah, so the Zamboni Express, one of the guys in Zamboni Express was Ray Candy. Oh, okay. Who became um uh Mass Superfly and he was Black Stud Williams. Um you know, he was like he was like an er like you know, he died in like the nineties. Like he was like a really he was kind of like before our time in wrestling, I guess you could yeah. say. But um, he's a big dude. You know, he was like a '70s wrestler. Yeah, big guy. Uh, but he trained New Jack, though. Oh, okay. There you go. That's wild. If if you consider that New Jack had training. <laughs> well, you know, he um, had a headlock, and he, uh, you know, <laughs> toe hold maybe. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, so he he trained New Jack. Yeah, so now we get a uh, uh, another interview from the, the 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 long Raiders, all right? Yeah, the, the Cowboy team I talked about earlier with their manager J. J. Dillon. It's weird to see J. J. Dillon like manage people that's not the Four Horsemen, but I know I know he was yeah. managing a lot of people before then. It's just weird to me seeing it. Yeah. So, question real quick was so you're right. That's the only thing I know about J. J. Dillon was that he was a manager of the Four Horsemen. Um, you know, obviously I know what happened to him later, but, um, so was he like always a manager or was he a wrestler at one time? I believe he was a wrestler at one time. Okay. Like he actually, like, re- Heenan. like Bobby yeah. Heenan was a wrestler at one point. Right. But to me, he's just a manager. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, they, yeah, he, they probably didn't have like the most stellar pro wrestling career. Um, uh, but then they, they, they're more known for a mouth. It's, it's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like gorilla, gorilla monsoon. Who was like a huge yes. wrestling star in like the sixties or something or the seventies. And then the only thing yeah. that we would have known him for him is being like the commentary with Bobby Heenan on the on the F. Right. So well, I remember like Arn Anderson saying on his podcast that Dylan, uh, which made me think he must have been a wrestler at one point, because Dylan, they had a name for it, but I can't think of what they called it now. But JJ Dylan was the only person that could do that thing where they like you know, he gets attacked by the face or whatever, and then he flies into the ropes and then flops out on the other side, and he's, like, hanging in the ropes on the outside of the ring. He was, like, like that was, like, his biggest talent. Like, he was the only person that could do that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I haven't seen, like, their matches, like Bobby Heenan or J.J. Dillon before, but I know they did have some, so. Yeah. So the, the big thing about this interview is Ron Bass recently won the Mid-Atlantic Championship. So I guess he's the champion of all Mid-Atlantic. Not only is he a mm-hmm. tag champion, but he's also a world champion at the same time, too. So, yes. so our boy Ron yeah. Bass, he's taken over the 84, brother. And he won it from uh, um, Angel- uh, Angelo or something. And the, the big thing is he won from a distraction and a power slam. That's how he won the belt, and he was just bragging about it. Uh, because, you know, he might have won the territories championship but since this mid-atlantic was under the 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 uh, what's it called the guidance or under the umbrella of the nwa the nwa world champion was the true world champion yes so so then after this we have a six-man tag team match with the six-man tag team champions the russians you know ivan and nikita and 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 fucking uh, uh don cornado all right, and they basically won their squash match. Not a bad match. And um, then we have an interview at the end with Wahoo McDaniel. 
He's saying this is the very first time that the NWA has held up a belt before. But it doesn't matter. It also doesn't matter if, if uh, Ricky Steamboat wants to put on 20 pounds. I don't need to put on 20 pounds. I'm 265 pounds of muscle right now. Yeah, you don't uh, need more weight than yeah, that. Yeah, you don't need it. And he said, if I got to go through all 16 guys, I will. And then uh, that was it. This this one who he's not too bad. Like he his interviews were the. I mean he looked really nice. He had a suit. He had like that MJF ring on him, a big old ring on his finger mm-hmm. and stuff. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see I can see why people like this Wahoo guy. You know, pretty uh, straightforward. You know, I think this is uh, I think he's a little older during this period right here. I think most of his fame was like in the seventies, but I can see why yes. he did pretty good. So, but yeah, you know, pretty yeah, decent he was- show. Go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say Oahu was definitely at the end of his career, kind of at the end of his career when I was wa- started watching him for sure. Yeah, so you know, not not a bad show. You know, everybody check it out. Um, anytime you can see a Mid Atlantic or you know Jim Crockett, you know we love those shows. Now, to me, yeah. this isn't like their hype year. Like I think their hype no, year is probably yet. from like late, no, early ninety five to like what eighty eight before they went out of business somewhere around there. 85 yeah you, yeah yeah you said that at 95 but yeah oh, i would say 85 yeah, to 88 is like where they were i don't know mm-hmm. and if there has ever been wrestling better than crockett from 85 to 88 and that includes the attitude era and that that might be a big statement but i don't know if there's ever been better wrestling it you know made tough, ever in ever in history it just depends other than those it just depends what you like you know what i mean well true because like if you like over the top storylines with gimmicks outside of the ring, you know, and sex. I mean, the '90s attitudes all for you. You know, if you like mm-hmm. very good, passionate pro wrestling fans and crowds, the '80s are for you. So it just depends. Yeah. And true. if you like, you know, muscular men who we were going to pick out of football and hopefully they get over, then you like the early 2000s. If you like shorter guys who complain on Twitter, then you like today. So it just depends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See what you did there. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, there's something for everybody. All right. Come on now. And they got good, re- good wrestlers today. I mean, come on now. So you can always find some good stuff. And I'll try to find the good stuff in our next segment. segment because let's talk about who booked this shit. All right. Yeah. Who booked this shit, man? <laughs> yeah. A couple of things. So this one's a, so this film is a British Gothic fantasy horror film. Oh, okay. Then. You don't say. So it was it was uh, written by Angela and Neil Carter, and no, they're not related related to John Carpenter, all right, or mm-hmm. any of them. They're just uh, uh, two people are writing the story, and apparently the, the the screenplay was written by both of them, and it came from uh, Carter's short story of the same name, The Company of Wolves. So she had a short story. And it was a short story collection in her collection series called The Bloody Chamber. All right. Mm -hmm. And apparently she wrote, like I said, she wrote the screenplay for it. And apparently there was also a radio, uh, a radio uh, broadcast of this uh, story as well in 1980. So Mm. So they also said Cartner's first draft of the screenplay, which contains some differences from the uh, finished film has been published in her anthology series, The Curious Room. That came out in 96. So, and then our director is going to be Neil Jordan. Yes. What do you know about Neil Jordan? So, not much. But he did do The Crying Game, which I never heard of. He did. Oh, oh, you've never never seen that? No, I've never seen it. Oh, you need to see The Crying Game. It's one of my favorite movies. The thing about The Crying Game, though, is you can't... You can't know anything about it when you watch it because if you know what the swerve is, you won't like it. Oh yeah, it's one of those. Yeah, yeah. Like like if you if you know what the swerve is, it won't mean anything when it happens. But oh. it, it's shocking. Like it's it's got a shocking swerve to it um, well, that you won't see. You probably won't see coming. Okay. Um, well, I didn't know about this too. Apparently, this guy did interview with the vampire. He did. He directed an Interview with a Vampire. I definitely um, seen that. I really like Neil Jordan. I used to be a huge fan of his his movies. Um, he made Michael Collins. He's made a gunch, bunch of really good movies. I can't think of anything recent that he's done that I've seen. Marlo? Um, Marlo. I haven't seen that. Yeah, that's, that's what he did recently. Yeah, I can't... Uh, I think what else is he done? Oh, The Brave One. He, he directed that. But he didn't write it, though. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I don't know. I mean, his um, he made a movie called In Dreams that was really good. Uh, Michael Collins is good. Interview with the Vampire is good. The Crying Game is good. Um, so he made like a bunch of really good movies in a row. Um, but uh, yeah, he's an Irish filmmaker. Um, but yeah, my, uh, but yeah, Neil Jordan. This is an early Neil Jordan film, one that I had never seen. I had never oh. seen this movie going into it. Yeah, me either. And I don't. I guess you hadn't either. It was something. So you know, I mean, it it mm. definitely was shot very well. So you know, if you're going for one of those fairy tale. You know, mm. like like I said, Wizard of Oz fairy tale stories. I thought it was actually shot and produced very well. Yes. So, but with with the technology they had at the time, of course. So, so uh, yeah. I mean, go ahead. I was gonna say I think that it still looks lo- mostly really good. Like there's some things I wouldn't have done, but um, but I think that it looks really good. And then in some cases, like you can't tell like what's a fake animal and what's a real animal. And I think that's better than having CGI animals for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, exactly. Yeah. I'm, I, well, I thought, you know, especially when it comes to them transforming into the wolves, I thought they did a great job mm-hmm. when it came to come to that. I thought the whole transformation. Except for that scenes. one. Yeah. Yeah. Which one? The tongue. I didn't like, uh, no, that one. I like that one. I didn't like the one where, um, I guess it was the first one in the movie where he pulls his skin off. Yeah. Like, like, like why, why oh, did he not okay, just yeah. become a wolf? But anyway, we'll talk about well, it. Well, it's for Germanic purposes, man. Right. And th- well, I mean, he's like literally a, has a skeleton hand and then he becomes a wolf based on that. Yeah. I mean, it takes forever to become a wolf that way. So a couple of interesting things. The girl who mm-hmm. played our, our, our main girl, Rosalind. Rosaline. Rosaline. Yeah. She, uh, uh, the actress Sarah Patterson, apparently she, this was like her first film playing the little, basically a little red riding hood, uh, character. And Mm -hmm. she would, she would go to that. And then her next film, she would be playing a snow white character. So she just trying to do all the fantasy brother. Another fairy tale. Yeah. (laughs) So she went to another fairy tale movie after this. So she wants to, yeah, gotta get the, gotta get the fairy tale gimmick going down there. Okay. So. I thought that was pretty interesting. But um, a couple yeah. of things about the writing. So the, the Angela Carter, she's the one that came up with the short story. Um, she worked with the, the director, Neil Jordan, on the script for the film. And this was uh, Carter's first experience writing a film. And it was also um, uh, the the uh, Jordan's, this was his second film that he's done. So they were, they were both pretty, pretty much brand new into their careers of writing and mm-hmm. uh, produce, uh, directing at this time, too. So apparently, the Carter and Jordan they met in Dublin in 1982 to discuss extending Carter's radio drama of her own story, which Jordan called too short for a feature film. So I guess uh, mm-hmm. uh, the guy um, Jordan, I guess he had his own radio drama show in the 90s. So that's kind of cool. Well, no, I mean he, what he's saying is that. <clears throat> She produced it for like the BBC or something, or they produced a radio version of it, but it was too short to make oh, into a gotcha. movie. So he wanted to expand it to make it long. Gotcha. Yes. So let's see. So it said in the LA Weekly interview published to to the uh, correspond with the film's US debut, Jordan said, "In a normal film, you have a story with different movements that program develop, go a little bit off the truck, come back and end." In this film, the different movements of the plot are actually separate stories. You start with the introduction and then move into different stories that relate to the main theme. All building yeah. all building to the fairy tale that everybody knows. The opening element of the dreamer gives us the freedom to move from story to story. So they're kind of trying something a little different uh, with this story. You know, not making it like you said, like a beginning, middle, and end kind of stuff. They're kind of like mm-hmm. doing these different stories to all culminate in one. Uh, let's see so Carter proposed ending for the film would have featured Rosaline diving into the floor of her bedroom and being swallowed up as by water in the DVD commentary for the film Jordan claimed that the limited technology of the time prevented the production of such a sequence whereas later CGI effects would in fact make it quite simple however in 19 yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, you can pretty much do almost anything nowadays, with, especially with this shit we got going on. So, it says, however, in 1929, Gene 
Cockatoo, using film technology that was more than half a century older, included a scene in his film, The Blood of a Poet, in which a character passes through a mirror and actually a pool of water. So basically what they're saying is like, they could have done it, they just didn't want to do it. Or spend the money on to, well, to do it. Yeah, but I mean, it's also a skill thing too. Like, That's true, I mean, yeah. Cocteau they, knew how to do that. Yeah. And Neil Jordan maybe didn't know how to do that at the time. Yeah, because I mean, you have to. The thing is, you have to have your you have you have to have your water so still that it looks like a mirror. So you can't have any kind of vibration or anything. And then you just have the character pass through the water. Um, also, <clears throat> footage. I mean, film in 1929 is completely different than it was in 1984. So you didn't have the kind of detail in 1929 on film that you would see in 1984. Yeah. So it was easier to do then. Just kind of like how things in high definition are harder to pull off now because you can see more flaws in things. So it's not exactly a fair comparison, but yeah. I, but I see the point. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just one of those things where it's like, you know, we might have been able to do it, but, you know. So the Jordan... The director notes how Carter was thrilled with the process of making a film as she had never really been involved with one. After the film, Jordan and Carter looked for other projects that they could work on together. However, none other came to fruition, partly because of Carter's later illness. According to Jordan, he and Carter discussed a, po- a possible adaption of Vampirla. Vampirla? Uh, Carter's Vampirla. Red- yeah. Vampirella, my bad. Yeah, Vampirella. No. Carter's, Carter's radio play, which shares how the original version of her short story, The Lady of the House of Love, from the Bloody Chambers. This is not to, this is not to be confused with the actual film, Vampirella, released in 1996 and based upon the comic book character of the same name. So Yeah, it's a completely different story. Yeah. Um, one thing that I thought was cool was Anton first worked on this. Uh, he designed, like, the sets. And uh, things like that. And then he would go on a few years later to work on the first Batman movie, nice. amongst many other things. But yeah, he's a re- really cool, uh, like he de- his, his designs are really cool. And when you look at this and then look at Batman, you can tell that the same person worked on it. For sure. Yeah, yeah, y- yeah. I-, I would definitely could see that, especially with like the set and how it was kind of designed and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, it does. It definitely has that like early, like very fairy tale, mystical like look to it. So. But yeah, I mean, uh, pretty interesting stuff. But uh, I say we get into the full review and discussion of the Company of Wolves. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. A young girl feels her soul awakened to the call of emotions she cannot name. This is the Twilight World, where half-forgotten memories of childhood lead into a fantastic realm. Was it a wolf or a man you killed? When I killed it, it was a wolf. It turned into a man. Here, dreams become reality, and our darkest fantasies come true. Worst kind of wolves are hairy on the inside, and when they bite you, they drag you with them to hell. They say the Prince of Darkness is a gentleman. Gentlemen always keep their promises. What have you done with my granddaughter? Nothing she didn't want. (laughs) The Company of Wolves, where fairy tales end and nightmares begin. The Company of Wolves. All right. So we start off the film. We see a dog. All right. <laughs> just fucking wandering around. I don't know if this was a wolf at the time. I believe it was just a dog. And this dog. So, go ahead. It, it, that's going to be something, a, a contention. So there are actually no wolves in this movie. Like all the wolves are actually dogs. Okay. That's what I thought. <laughs> And it's really obvious if you know anything about dogs. Yeah. Like if you've like ever seen a dog before, 
you know that these are not wolves. These wolves do not look like this. Wolves do not look like dogs. They just they look different. If you saw any kind of a dog and a wolf, you would know which is which. Well, you know, those wolves so, are expensive, brother. They want a little bit more on their contract. <laughs> <laughs> and they're yeah, I'm sure they I'm sure they do, and they're probably harder to wrangle. But yeah, so I think it's supposed to be a wolf, but it is actually a dog. <laughs> but yeah, I was confused by that too, because there's like there's no wolves in this. Every, they're all dogs. Well, this uh was it a husky? This husky was walking around there and apparently he gets scared by a doll. This random doll yeah. that's just sitting around. And he goes up to the main um old school British house. That's creepy. And, sure. And he's going up to meet the character who's known as father and mother. That's their names. And the father, okay, was played by one David Warner. And I David was like, Warner, yeah. fuck, this guy's been in everything. And I remember him being in the original Ninja Turtles movie. Who did he play in Ninja Turtles? Fuck, he was like the, uh, oh, fuck, I don't, okay. I'm not. That's what I was trying to think. I don't remember who he played, and I think it was like the. Uh, I think he was somebody helping out. I think he was like the. Uh, he was like the 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 doctor who was working on the ooze that accidentally got the ooze spilled into the uh, sewer. So he was like basically the 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 the, the, the what's it uh, the rats and the turtles uh, god basically because he was like the scientist that created the ooze that created them. So that's what his character hmm. was. Okay, well, I mean, he's been in a lot of things. Yeah. The one I don't... <laughs> of all things... Yes. Yeah, the whole things I remember is, is Ninja Turtles. Of all brother. things to you to remember. He yeah. was in Straw Dogs. He was... I mean, I, this is just off the top of my head. He was yeah. in Straw Dogs. He was in The Omen. He was in um, Cross of Iron. He was in um, Time Bandits. He was in Tron. He played Sark in Tron. This guy's been in a lot of movies. This guy's a really famous actor. The Omen. He was in there, too. Yeah, I was about to say he was in the Omen. Yeah, apparently he, he was the guy in. Guy's head cut off. Apparently he was in Scream Two, which I have no recollection of him being there, but that's fine. I don't know who he played in Scream Two. <laughs> so he was I haven't there. seen that movie in twenty years. Exactly, it's been a while. So he's there, and then this is when. We, okay, so this was a part I was a little confused about, and I hope you can help me out here, Allison. So we oh, have God. the okay. main. Yes, we have the main character. Her <laughs> name is uh, Rosaline. I'm just going to call her Rose because I can't say that name over and over again. Okay, we'll call her Rose. Rose. So there's like two of them, right? There's like there's like a she had a sister, and they were like uh, identical sisters, right? I thought the other one was isn't Alice is the young one, right? I thought she was younger. Okay, yes. No, yeah. Alice is older. I'm sorry, Rosalie is Rosaline is old, younger. Alice is older, right? Yes. But like, okay. was the okay? So when the girl goes upstairs, who was the one in the bed? Was it Alice or was I it, don't know? Or was it Rose? <laughs> I'm thinking, I don't know. I, I I can't. I can't. I don't know. They look I was a little exactly confused. alike. Okay. Yeah, they do look almost exactly like. I I I I'm not 100 percent sure I'm smart enough to watch this movie. <laughs> um, <laughs> this maybe, movie might be a little over my head. Maybe we were maybe we weren't drunk enough to watch <laughs> to this. One, okay. <laughs> okay. So uh, what I'm thinking, of, I think the I think Alice was like the girl in the bed, and the one the younger one sleeping. All right. And then Rose went up there and she was like taunting her ass. Like, oh, you're a fucking pest. I bet you took my lipstick. Yeah. And I was like, man, this girl a heel? Like, what's going on here? And then next thing yeah. we know, we see Alice. She's dreaming in her little dreaming room. And she's dreaming of her dolls being huge and attacking her. See, that's why I thought that. Well, okay, that's a good point because. She's dreaming about the the toys. Yeah, the toys. Yeah. So okay, so I thought that it was Alice. It was a. I mean, uh, Ro- uh, no, that makes sense. I thought it was Rose that was asleep because yeah. she because Alice, the older sister, is accusing her of taking her stuff, and she keeps calling her a pest. Yeah, but like, why did the older one die then? It had to be Alice because, the one dreaming, or no? So how, no, so- because she dies. Because that's like the next scene where she dies. She gets killed by the wolves. But she she dies because... Um, okay, I think I got it. I think I got it. <laughs> she dies because Rose... She's 
So Ro- it's Rose's dream, and she's yes. annoyed by she hates she's she's not she doesn't hate her sister, and she's not a, she's annoyed by her sister calling her a pest. So in her dream, she's dying. Okay, right? Yes. Oh, I get it. So Rose has the power to have life. power dreams. Okay, and I think Rose turned Alice to her dream, and then Alice was out there getting attacked by wolves outside. Yeah, but she only didn't. She only did. I not understand that. Did she, didn't she only die in the dream? She didn't die in real life, right? No, she did die. They put her ass in the fucking ground in the next scene. Is that in real life though, or is yes. that still in the dream? No, that's the real life. Okay, all right. Okay, so she did actually die. Yes. Okay, never mind. So right. Alice, Alice is dead is basically. Confusing. Okay. Okay. Like I said, I I, I haven't I haven't uh, smoked enough LSD. Okay, <laughs> for for me to get this plot line yet, brother. Okay, <laughs> I'm not. That's a, what uh, I was thinking. I, I need to listen, be really stoned to watch this. I've always sucked at these like fantasy movies. Okay, I'm, yeah. I'm gonna try my best, everybody out I'm here. Okay, LSD. <laughs> all right. I'm a, we're gonna try our best, and I'm gonna try my best. I mean, I got lost during the Dark Crystal at the first couple minutes. Okay, so get, right. bear with me. Okay, guys. all right. You're uh-huh. okay. Now you're right. Okay, now I'm remembering. Okay, yeah. so. Because what it really confuses me is that a lot of some of the characters are played but in the dream or in the stories are played by the same actors as they are in the in the real world. Yeah, if they're not, they, then they look alike. Okay, I couldn't tell. Right. But basically, what right. happened is we're seeing that there's like this dream happening. Rose can have these dreams, and the, her younger sister basically got killed by wolves, and that's when they're putting her down in the in the casket, yeah. and everybody's all sad. And this is when we have Granny. Give uh, Rose a cookie, a gingerbread cookie, and she's going to spend time with her now. And then we can also see that Rose is uh, semi-flirting with a younger kid around her same age. I swear they said his yeah. name is Danny, but they, ne- they didn't really give him like an f- official name. All right, it was just one of the yeah. Amra- Amrus's boys. So, but uh, we're going to call him Danny. Yeah, sure. And then the... Um... Uh, the grandmother's play by the great Angela Lansbury. Oh, yes. Well, what'd she do? Well, well, I know her pre- pre- uh, predominantly from Murder, She Wrote, because I used to watch that show with my grandma when I was a little kid. Oh, no uh, shit. But she's been, in a, she's been in a whole bunch of movies, though. She, she's she been an actress since, like, the 30s or the 40s. Murder, She Wrote's a good one. A I used to watch that, too. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great show. So now we have Granny telling Rosie some stories. At her little house. Okay. And she wants to tell her a story about this young married couple. So every time they tell stories, we have like, it's like we can see the story happening. You know? So now we see this young couple getting married. They didn't name any fucking people. Just young girl getting married, young guy getting married. They're they're going into their, their cottage. And they're about to, you know, bed. You know what I mean? Because that's yeah. what you do when you get married back in the day. You start bedding right away. All right, you know. Yeah. So you know the guy. You know he paid his fucking alimony. He's ready to go. All right. So uh, he then they see the uh, in the bed. There's like a hedgehog in the bed. Yes. And the girl thinks it's some sort of joke. And then the guy was all like, "It's like you really think I'm beautiful?" She's like, "Yeah." He's like, "All oh, right, I'm about to rock your world like you never seen." And then he says, like, and then the hedgehog, like, cock blocks him. And he's like, oh, fuck it, thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then he takes it out and he throws it. And he's all like, oh, fuck, that moon's out there. <laughs> he's like, well, I, I got to go. Um, he's like, yeah, I'll be back sometime and just wait for me. <laughs> okay. I have, I have to go become a werewolf. <laughs> yeah, I got to go be, I gotta be a wolf. But he doesn't say that, though. Like, he just, like, leaves. But he's, like, no. he, but he's basically, he's, he's kind of like a guy going off to prison. Hey, 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 wait for me. I might not be back for like years and years, but hey, w- wait, wait for me though. Okay. Well, he, he doesn't imply that. He just says that I'll be back. I, he, he said, he said wait years. for her. Yeah, but it doesn't say like it would be years like it apparently seems to be yeah. as we go on. Yeah, and then like the, the grandma was saying the girl waited for a long, but she waited too long, but she, she ended up getting married to somebody else and they had a bunch of babies. Mm-hmm. So we see her playing with some of her babies and then out of nowhere, he shows up after many, many years, and he's like going back to the house. He's all beat up, torn clothes, and everything. 
and he just goes inside. Uh, the girl can't believe what she's seeing. This guy's back in her life. He sits down. He looks at him. He's like, he's like, I'm hungry. And then she feeds him some food. And then he looks at the kids like, what are these all spawned from? And she's like, they're spawned from my belly. <laughs> and he was all like, he's like, but, they're not spawned from me. And they need to be out of here. Of course not. So he starts freaking out like, on everybody. Like, like, what was was he surprised? Like, did he expect them, them to be his kids, even though he? They well, been maybe, gone for like maybe forever? when you turn into a wolf, the the years become like minutes or something. So he had no idea what's maybe, going on. Maybe, yeah, maybe, yeah. And I guess like the, I'm okay. So what? <laughs> what I'm guessing with these wolves is they're yeah. they are kind of like stuck between being a human and being a wolf, and they can't really like choose when they be each other or something so and i can't tell if the wolves do they like do they fuck each other or they just want humans or something i can't really tell i don't i don't know like this is like i think that this story could have not been in the movie and the movie would have been better like i think the other stories are better than this one and i that that they're gonna tell and i think that this one doesn't really make a lot of sense as again there's hardly any like context of the movie in it other than he's a wolf and he's an asshole. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's the only context to this. But, I mean, I don't know what he would expect after being gone that long. Um, but, yeah, like, it, like you know, because with the werewolf thing, like, typically, if it's a full moon, then you become a werewolf. If it's not a full moon, then you don't. And it has nothing to do with whether he goes outside and sees the other wolves or not. Yeah. But, like, he was perfectly fine until he looked outside and saw the werewolf, the other wolves, and he's like, "Oh, I gotta go do this." Yeah, and also too, I I think the the town that they're in, or or the or the uh, the characters that are human, I think they know that they have a big uh, wolf infestation. <laughs> you think they have? They know they have a werewolf problem. <laughs> like I don't. Okay, so I don't. I have to be. I don't know if they know about the werewolves. But yeah. it seems like the wolves are like a big trouble to this town because I do remember the scene, but the wife was all like, she was all like, she can't find her missing husband, but she found a wolf track and she's like, that damn beast probably got him. So she, I think she thought that the werewolves yeah. killed her husband. Okay. So I don't know if they know about werewolves at this time, but I think they know about she, wolves. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Well, I mean, that's a classic story, right? Like yeah. here in the wolf and all that, like, you know, the village is, is, uh, threatened by wolves because wolves kill the livestock and kill whatever, you know, yeah. um, they, you know, they take over. Um, so and to kill the wolves, right. And that's, that's the classic story. And we'll see that in this movie too. But, um, but yeah, I mean like, like, I don't know. So this is another example of where like, like, I don't know, like in a way I feel personally attacked by this movie because I think that this, the meaning of this movie is against people like me. Cause like, I'm just thinking, so I'm like wolf? when I'm watching the story, I'm, uh, well, I may be, but like when I'm thinking like, I'm like, okay. So like his choice is he can either become a wolf and go run around in the woods at night yeah. or he can be married to her. Like, which one would you choose? I mean, I would immediately choose to be a wolf. <laughs> well, you know, well, I you thought, know I, mean? I thought they couldn't like control it. You know what I mean? Like, he saw the fucking moon. He saw his little cub out there. He's like, oh, you know what? I'm going to go with them, but I'm going to come back for this girl. Mm. Well, maybe, I, I don't want to say he couldn't control it, because, I mean, he, he didn't just immediately become a wolf as soon as the moon set, but I think that he saw his, like, wolf pack, and he's like, oh, yeah, I, I really want to do this. Well, okay. I want to go out with the boys. That's what he's saying. So, so what happened here also, too, is... You know, after he saw the girl when the kids and everything, he started calling her a whore a bunch of times yeah. and he started slapping her around. Right. All right. So now he's becoming like an asshole. And then she right, got yeah. she got so fed up with them but... and then she poured the hot water on him and that's when he transformed him to the wolf when he shed his skin. And then like this time, yeah. Yeah. And then like the weirdest thing is like so this guy took about like what, ten minutes? <laughs> He took about like ten minutes to trans to his transform into a wolf, right? You think he's gonna cause some fucking damage? You know what I mean? Like this guy's turning. That's, that's like, what I'm saying. Okay, hold on. So he's he's turning into a wolf. He's shedding his skin. It takes him like 10, 15 minutes to transfer for to his fucking wolf, and then the yeah. husband just comes home, takes a shovel or some shit, and just chops off his fucking head. 
I was like, what kind of payoff is that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's why I didn't like the story. Yeah. Like, it took forever for him to become a wolf. Yeah. Like, like you know, they should just had him turn into a werewolf instead of, like, him peeling his skin off. And then at, like, one point, his, like, hands are, like, just skeleton hands. Yeah. Like, he's, like he's taking all the skin and muscle off of his hands. So I guess he's gonna draw. He's gonna. Well, you know what happened gonna, was like, he back. he he didn't get the right amount of protein that the other wolves got. I guess not. So. I guess not. But then, but it did look kind of cool though. Yeah. Like like the part where he actually become becomes the wolf. Yeah. And you can see like his snout come out of the little animatronic wolf and like that that all looked really good. So whenever the uh, the husband knocked off his head super easy, uh, the wolf head landed in some milk. Okay, right? and then it turned yeah, back to weird, the uh, right? human form, and the wife was like, "Oh my god, it looks like just like he did when I married him." And then the husband got so pissed <laughs> off at the wife, and he slapped her. I'm like, "What is going on here?" <laughs> hey, how dare right. you get? I mean, hey, how dare you get your ex-husband wolf guy in here again, bitch? What the hell? No, that's not what he's mad about. Like he's mad because. <laughs> Like, he's thinking, like, okay, this guy just turned into a fucking wolf and tried to kill you. Yeah. But the only thing you say is, oh, he looks like the guy that I fell in love with. No, he's a fucking wolf. And he tried wolf, to kill man. you. And, and his head's floating in a bucket of milk that's just randomly here for some reason. Like, who keeps her milk in a bucket? Well, she does, brother. You know, because like you got all kids. You got to feed them milk. Maybe it just came out of the cow. Maybe they just came out of the cow. But that was a really cool effect where the wolf head falls into the bucket of yeah. milk. And then when it flows to the top, it's Stephen Ray's face. That was really cool. I'm not sure how they did that unless they just shot it twice and made some kind of cut I can't see in there, but that was really cool. So then we come back to Granny and Rose. And Rose is like, I never let yeah. the man slap me around. All right. And then Granny's like, Well, you know, sometimes you uh you get some of these go- these guys, you know, they they butter you up, then they turn into a beast after they're done. And that's when I was like, Well, hold on a second. All right. Damn, these people do they hate men on this show? What's going on here? Well, that's what I'm that's what I'm saying. Like like, see, I, like, I think that we're the bad guys in this. Yes. Like, like, oh, man. You know, me and you specifically <laughs> are the, are the yeah. bad guys they're talking about in this movie. I mean, but. this is 1980s, brother. Do you think all guys just want sex in random places? Come on. I mean, th- yeah. have some more respect for that. Okay. Uh, you know, okay, if I'm going to have a sex with a girl, I'm at least going to make it in the back of the Trans Am or a coffin, like Night of the Demons. Yeah. Oh. There ain't nobody fitting in the back of the Trans Am. <laughs> Trust me. You have to try that. Yeah. Let's do it, brother. So then they start talking about... This is when she brings up the whole wolf shit. She's all like, hey, you know, you can... Uh, uh, you don't have... Don't worry about your sister. She went to heaven because she got bit by a wolf that had their hair on the on the outside. The ones you got to be worried about is that they had their hair on the inside. That's the ones right. you'll go to hell with. Right. Yeah, so what she says is your sister's in heaven because she was killed by a wolf with the fur on the outside, yeah. but some wolves have fur on the inside. And when they kill you, they'll drag you down to hell. So does that mean, so what it, does she mean by that, that if someone is obviously bad and they kill you, then it's not your fault. But if you fall for someone who seems to be good, but is really bad, and you let yourself be taken for this, then it's you, then it's your fault that it happened. Yeah, basically. I, you know, you know what I'm saying. Like, I think that that's. Yeah, we'll, we'll um, see that play out later too. Right. So, and then she asks, like, does a real wolf does it bent the bitches afterwards, or does it like you know basically does it like kill the bitches afterwards? I was like, damn, okay, there's some dialogue in this movie. <laughs> All right, and then she's like, can you give the granny a little kiss? I was like, this is kind of getting kind of weird. And At this she, point, I was just shocked that I saw Angela Lansbury say, say bitches, but yeah. I know. <laughs> so now it's uh, nighttime, right? And they're all sleeping. And apparently the, the granny yeah. has like a little like squirrel or something that's very angry. That has like, <laughs> that, that, yes. yeah, something like that. So yeah, Rose, I couldn't figure out yeah. what this thing was either. It's like this little animal that yeah. lives with her. So like we're saying, like this whole town is... Affected by wolves, so they're all like on yeah. their edge of their seat a lot of times because they're uh, wolves. So you can't. The big, the big part about this is you can't go off like the path. If you go off the wrong path, you can get attacked by wolves and die. So you got to go up through yeah, all the well, paths. 
Right, because that's from Little Red Riding Hood, right? Yes. When when so when when her mom sends Little Red Riding Hood to her grandmother's house, she says, "Don't stray off the path." Yep. Um. So that's what she's saying, like never stray off the path and never never eat a windfall apple. Exactly. So now the next morning, uh, Rosie and her grandmother are going for a walk. All right, and then the grandma is basically saying, "Hey, since your sister's not not here anymore." You are gonna to have to be the uh, the 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 legacy of the family, and you're not gonna be a girl mm-hmm. anymore. Hinting that we need you to fuck and make some more babies. Okay. Mm-hmm. So we see a bunch of kids playing around, a bunch of boys. Uh, the family ends up eating dinner, and the moms complain that there's too much food because there's only three of them now. So now we have Rose. She's getting some water. And this is when we meet the the young boy that uh, likes her. Mm-hmm. Uh, I named him Danny, so I swear they said Danny, uh, but I don't see that written anywhere. But so his name is Danny. So he wants to play a game, and she plays the game. And she pours water on his ass. So they're kind of flirting a little yeah. bit. And now we see the scene of her sleeping with red lipstick again. Okay. So okay, I guess that means something. So the she wakes up with no lipstick on. That's why I was kind of confused. Was she swimming? Was she dreaming about? I have no idea what's going on. There's some. I couldn't really tell who the fucking like, original dreaming person was. All right? Like only you would notice that. But yeah, I, I mean, I thought that the the scenes where she's sleeping with the with the really bright red lipstick was just like, you know, to make it look good in that scene and to be like a little Red Riding Hood reference. I guess. But just like the shawl is a little Red Riding Hood reference, but. But yeah, we'll talk yeah. about that. And apparently, the parents yeah, like they know. tried, but they couldn't do some, any more sex. All right. <laughs> okay. So now it's the next morning. Okay. And uh, so they're just basically talking uh, about some of the granny stories uh, that she's been telling. Um, uh, Rose, you know, just saying like you know the grannies always figured you has their, the favorite. Like she was always the favorite of the grannies for some reason. Mm-hmm. And uh, so now the uh, the guy who was flirting with her earlier gives her some flowers. So he's flirting some more with her. And the big thing is he wants to take a, a walk in the woods after service. So Allison, you know, in this dreamland, if you find the female that you like, the big way to show that you're interested in them is to tell them after church service you want to take a walk. Yeah. All right. So that's like that big sense. deal. Like, the whole town's like, oh, shit. It's on, brother. He wants to take a fucking walk. What kind of babies we going to get out of this one now? All right? And, of course, she's a little nervous about it. So, now, Rose and Granny, they, they're talking about... Um, the They're talking about why... Why Granny's roses are so red and the moms are not. All right? And then, like, the Granny's, like, telling her about, like, these like bad kids on Christmas. Like you could tell which ones are going to be bad on Christmas. If they come out head or feet first, one's going to be the devil. One's not. I'm like, what is, what is going on here? This granny just has so many well, random are, stories. Yeah. They're just all f- like folk tales. Yeah. Folk tales, wives yeah. Tales. And the best part is when like, she was like bashing on the preacher guy mm-hmm. <sighs> saying like, I don't know why he's a fucking father and shit. <laughs> and then like, then, like, he, like, drops a branch on her. She's like, oh, man, this fucking branch in my head. She's, like, complaining about it. He's all like, oh, yeah, you know, every time, sometimes we got to, like, uh, uh, what is it, like, tune up tune up the old hags or something. So they're kind of, like, yeah, going off each the, other. Is that the scene where, like, she's saying, Rosaline is saying, uh, or she tells Rosaline, or kind of implies to Rosaline that she should watch out for the priest trying to have sex with her or something? I guess. And then she's and then she says and then Rosalind says, but he's a priest, he doesn't have sex with anybody. And then her the grandmother says, Why do you think they call him father? Oh yeah, yeah, that's what and it then is. they then he drops the branch. Yeah, then he drops yeah, the branch, the branch on her head. Like yeah. 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 <laughs> and then this is also too when the granny gives her that red coat cloak. Like the little red riding hood cloak. The shawl. Yeah. She, the shawl. Because she says she was making it for her sister, but then her sister died, so I'm just gonna make it for you instead. Which is Damn. like, oh, great. Some dark shit over here with this movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. One thing one thing about this movie to the people out there listening who haven't watched it is one of the reasons it's hard to talk about is because 
it doesn't really have a linear story. Like it kind of does, yeah. but then it keeps going off on these other little tangents that have nothing, to, not not nothing to do with the main story, but yeah. aren't part of the main story. Yeah, it's like, like these the, the main stories. story is probably only like twenty minutes long, maybe. Yeah, um, like but then there's all these other little things that happen. Yeah, yeah. like we were saying on that, who booked this? It's kind of like the couple stories all coming to an end at one. <clears throat> so Ran- Rosina, she's back because yeah. she's playing with spiders at her house now. Then the dad's there, and he's like looking at the flowers, and he starts eating them. <laughs> and the mom's like, "What are you doing? No teaser!" And it's basically teasing her because of the uh, the boy who gave her the flowers, and now heard that they're going to take a walk after church. And yes, he's no, like, "They're obviously going to get married." Yeah, and then she the, she's like, "Well, I don't know if anything's going to happen." It's like, "Oh, you know, one thing will lead to another. You don't know fucking." <laughs> I'm saying, "Okay." Yeah. So then we hear the uh, the church bells. Church is in session now. The guy is reading a whole story about wolves and, and, and packs of wolves. Everything's about wolves and shit. And the next thing we know, we see some spiders <laughs> fall from the fucking ceiling. Okay. Yeah. So this is when Rose and Dana they take they take their walk, and everybody's all happy about. It. I was like, yeah, go get him, brother. Go get go get in there. Go take that walk. <laughs> <laughs> Do it. Do <laughs> what the it. hell's going on here? So they're all walking and stuff, and then uh, uh, they, the Danny, he kind of just wants some. Uh, he, he he wants a kiss, bad, just right now, just right yeah. two steps yeah. in the walks. He's like, well, I'm ready to kiss. He's like our boy. Um, he's like he's like our boy Jay from last week, Night of the Demons. He just wants the sex and the kiss mm-hmm. right now, brother. Out the we're two seconds out the door, yeah. let's go right here. And the girl's like, well, what about that bird? He's like, and our boy Danny, he's like, well, you know, you're prettier than that bird. Ooh, nice. Oh, good line. Good, good. I like it. He's trying. And then uh, she runs away for a little bit, and he's all like, hey, you know, like, what's going on over here? There's like a rainbow that shows up, too. Like, randomly. I was like, is this leprechaun? Please show up. That'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, he's all asking, like, you know, do you like me and stuff? She's like, yeah, I like you, but, you know, I'm just, you know, I just don't want to kiss you right now. All right. And then he, he's, she's like, well, you know, why not? Like, prove it. And then they did end up kissing. And then she runs away, and then he tries to follow her throughout the uh, the story. And uh, she eventually like finds like a big ass tree, and Rose she she climbs up the tree, and she finds some eggs with like a stone. You you ever been to those like theme parks where like you can go there and they make like, a little like plastic toy? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah, that's what this reminds me of. She finds like this little plastic toy and these eggs and some red paint that she puts on her lips. Mm. All right, and then during... Go ahead. I was going to say, I don't think I've ever really been to a theme park, actually, now I think about it. Oh, okay. But I'll take your word for it. Yeah, so like, the, I'll, I'll give you an example. So I went to the Universal um, Halloween Horror Nights, and one of the uh, the rooms, or after you're done at the, at the gimmick stands... They have, yeah. like, you could pay, like, a dollar or something, and they can mold you out like a creature. And I got, like, the Bride of Frankenstein. It's like they mold you like this uh. little plastic toy. All right? And it looks very cool. Yeah. It's pretty cool. I got a, I got a, the Creatures of the Black Lagoon. I got that one, and I got the Bride of Frankenstein one. And that's what this, like, uh. egg thing reminded me of was that. Oh, uh, that's awesome. Yeah, maybe I should go to an amusement or a theme, theme park. Should but be. anyway. Pretty wild. But, um... But the, then during this, though, Danny finds a dead cow. And he's like, oh, shit, wolf, wolf. He cries out for wolf basically <laughs> everywhere. He's the man that cried wolf, I guess, mm-hmm. in the story. So Maybe, he, yeah. he he goes back to the town. He's crying wolf. And then the dad, like, Rose's dad's pissed off. Like, where the fuck's my daughter? He, like, punches his ass and grabs him. And then Danny's dad comes mm-hmm. over. You can't punch my son. And then they start fighting. And then the whole town starts fighting each other. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And then the mom comes over there and cools him up with some water. And this is when Rose shows up. And she's like, hey, where you been? <laughs> all right. And then she shows everybody her child toy. And they're all shocked. And I'm still confused about what that child toy was supposed to mean or what it was. I have no idea. Oh, like, I, yeah, I don't know. Like, <laughs> so they're like little babies. Okay. Was that right? supposed to be like the, the, how they, does this town hatch from eggs? No, <laughs> no, I don't know what it's supposed to mean. I, I don't know. Like I said, I don't think I'm smart enough to watch this movie, but, but no, like, so they're in the woods and they're like little eggs, right? And the eggs open up 
Yeah. That's why I think this whole thing is a dream because it, all this dream like stuff happens. Yeah. But like, so like they're looking at, she's looking at the egg and the egg opens up and it's like a little baby inside the egg. And then she goes back to the village and she has a little, which is a little plastic baby, but I don't think it's supposed to be plastic. And then she's holding this little tiny little baby, like in a palm of her hand, like it's a little teeny tiny baby. I mean, I and get, I get what they are like now. Tear on it. It's probably the wolf babies. <laughs> The werewolf babies. Uh, I don't. I, they come out of eggs. I don't think so. I don't think these are werewolf babies. Wolves don't lay eggs. How do you know that? Well, I'm pretty sure that wolves don't lay eggs. I mean, I did have science class. <laughs> I have no idea what the fuck <laughs> these things are. Then okay. So anyway, I don't understand this part either. I don't know what's going on. Well, I don't know we're why gonna, we're going to drop it like on. they did. Okay, that's what we're going to do. Because <laughs> we never, they never talked about it again, and yes. we won't and, either. And if they did, I it must have been in passing because I have no idea what it was. So now it's nighttime, and the dad he is ready to kill these this wolf. All right. Yeah. And, of course. And uh, uh, he's like, you know, the only thing that these beasts understand is my gun, brother. Yeah. Fuck this guy. Yeah. All right. So they're they're gonna see him and the 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 men the men of the town all go off to go find this wolf bastard who killed this one cow. Right. All right. So, yes. Also, when does this take place? So like in the beginning of the movie, they're they're like driving in cars and stuff. And then there's cars in some of the stories that the grandmother tells. But then he the gun he has is like from the like eighteen hundred seventeen or eighteen hundreds, maybe. I have no idea. <laughs> All right. Right. Okay. Anyway, yeah. continue on. He's going to kill this wolf bastard. Yeah. So he's going to kill the wolf bastard. And then this yeah. is when Rose is now talking to her mom about some of the uh, stories that the granny, granny has a shit ton of stories apparently. So, and then yes. she's always saying, well, the granny spoiled you and stuff. And they talk about wolf being monsters. All right. And then they talk about, um, they talk about it being cold and winter's coming soon and a good thing they're indoors. Okay. So now the town, I think they found the wolf. Um, mm-hmm. And, and they, well, they basically said, they set a trap for the wolf by using a duck. All right. So that's what they're doing right now. Yeah. So they think they found the tracks of the wolf and what they're doing is they're setting a duck to kind of capture him. All right. Mm-hmm. This is when Rose is telling the mom stories of. See, now she has this new story of this girl in a in, in the valley, a terrible wrong that came to a terrible right. I was like, okay. Yeah, so, this is the story Rose tells to her mother. Yeah, it's about a wedding, right? Yes. Yeah, so this is the one where she tells the story after hearing her mom and dad have sex, right? I guess. I mean, no. I mean, no. This is when d- the, doesn't she say? What do you mean after? Doesn't sex? she say? Does is, doesn't she say his dad hurting? Does dad hurt you? Yeah, yeah, that's right. And she says, and yeah. she says, what are you talking about? And he says, for, you know, like what happened last night? And she's like, no, 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 not at all. And then she's like, I'm going to tell you this story. And then she tells her the story about the about the wedding. Yes, you, yeah, you got that right. Yes, yeah, because remember, all men suck in this movie. Uh-huh. <laughs> we're all wolves. Yes, we're all wolves. So, yeah, we're the bad guys in this movie. Anyway, go ahead. So we have this old time wedding. Yeah. You know, where the guys are like, they, well, what do you, it's, it's like the old British style or something where they paint their faces. Yeah, and yeah shit. it's like, uh, yeah, it's like French Revolution, yeah. 1700s type stuff. Yeah. I kind of dig it. You know what I mean? I'd <laughs> I dress could up, see you dress like I'd this. dress like one of these guys, no problem. Yeah. I'd be pompous as shit. Where's my strawberries <laughs> you, picked up? You would be. <laughs> <laughs> so they're all having a nice little wedding here, right? And there's the redhead girl shows up. She looks like she was pregnant. You can just see one of the guys like, oh, fuck. Oh, man, that might be me doing here. <laughs> All right. So she's like looking at everybody. And like, they didn't really give us a backstory about what happened. But I'm guessing, like, well, anyway, the redhead comes in there. She's like, stares everybody down. And you got like, a couple of these, like, people at the table just eating raw meat. And then she like, like goes up well, to a mirror and she breaks it. And they all turn into werewolves. Uh, okay, so let me explain what happened to you. To you in this, okay. So, so okay, so the wedding is happening, and they're all sitting around, um, um, looking like they're all dressed like that band that I can't remember the name of that we went to see. In, Flesh God, uh, they they were a little bit. Flesh God, they, yeah. were, 
They weren't yeah, as they, they, look, they weren't all, as dark as them. Okay, these are wearing white. All right. they're, yeah, they're all they're all dressed like Flesh God Apocalypse. <laughs> they all look like the like they're in Flesh God Apocalypse, and they're all sitting around like at a wedding, right? Yeah. And then this girl shows up out of the woods because she's dirty and she's poor and she's from like the valley. Yeah. Because that's where all the poor people live. That's the ghetto, right? Of this of this world. And then they sh- so she. Sh- she comes in, and it turns out that one of these flesh god apocalypse guys, <clears throat> this noble people, had sex with her and got her pregnant, but now yes. he's marrying somebody else. Yeah. So to get her revenge, it turns out she's actually a, a like a sorceress, and she turns all of them into wolves. Oh, okay, right? so because they weren't they're all like wolves. they're all. No, they weren't already wolves. She turns them into wolves because they were they were just like rich people, and and then like you keep showing like up close. Adam, like he, you know how you keep saying they were eating raw meat, like they keep showing like up the showing them up close and showing like how like uncivilized they really are, but they're like the civilized people in the world, supposed by according to society standards, and then like that old woman that keeps like eating the food and like stuffing it in her mouth, and just like it's just like she's eating so much food is like falling out of her mouth, and then like even when she's turning into a wolf, she's still like doing it, yeah. and then like she so she turns them all into wolves. And then she curses all the wolves that they have to come serenade her and her child every night, which is why wolves howl. Like that's like a, it's like a kind of like a fable. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Because they, when they turn into wolves, they, yeah, they come to her every night now and they they bark. So the, there's two scenes. I just seen uh, my, my two favorite parts were this. So there's like random Christmas music playing while this is happening. Yes. And not everybody turned to, uh, not everybody did turn to, to dogs basically that's where they were they were dogs, dogs. Uh, they were dogs there yeah. was a couple people i guess they were just like the butlers or some shit that didn't turn to it but my favorite part was like when everybody turned into the dog and they rush out of the out of the tent there's like yeah. these two ducks there and all the dogs like run over the ducks <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of funny and stuff the, with the dogs if you really watch and it the, and the duck just like comes right back up and starts walking again like nothing phased him these, de- right, like these deadly the wolves. These fucking deadly wolves can't even take out one fucking duck. <laughs> Come on, man. Right, you can tell there's a lot of one take stuff in this. Like, you know, the wolves ran over the dog, the duck, and they're like, okay, fine, cut it. That's good enough. Um, but there's a lot of shit at the end of it when they're running through the house um, mm-hmm. that I'll talk about when we get there. That's really funny. Like the dogs are doing like stuff that they shouldn't be doing. So after all this, the mom is pretty much like questioning what what kind of stories is Granny telling you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so they're like, and then um, you know they're just talking about the wolves and the powers that the that the wolves possess. And then she was like telling about, like you were saying, she was telling about that lady who had the power of these wolves, you know, serenade her every night, and that's her power. Yeah. Her power was in that making these all to the wolves and stuff. So. So now they now the the townspeople trap a wolf that had green eyes, glowing green eyes, kind of remind me of something out of Goosebumps. Yeah. They trap him and yeah. they shot, shoot him six times, and then they shoot him six, six times more. Six times. And I was like, "Fuck, yeah. bro!" If Loomis showed up over here, <laughs> like, <laughs> are you kidding? Kill me? the wolves. I'd have been the fucking happiest person. That would have been awesome. It's like, damn, there he is. So now they they after they kill this they just leave They're like all right job's done they just walk really slowly out of there, mm-hmm. and now the dad has come back, all right and he basically he he comes in there kind of like confused he goes up to his family like yeah I, you know I cut this uh this uh the the wolf paw, off this uh this wolf but it was weird because like, it was like a man's hand, so mm-hmm. like basically what happened was the townsfolk they shot this wolf right. But then yeah. when they opened up the curtain, we didn't see this in the film. This is what he was saying. He said they opened up the curtain. It was like a man. Like it was, it was, so they think they shot some random guy. But he's like, no, I swear we shot a wolf. Like I swear when I cut off mm-hmm. the fucking paw, it was a wolf. But there's a man's hand here. So what's going on here? Yeah. So he's like just kind of confused about the, uh, this. See, that's when they're trying to realize like the, there's werewolves out here and stuff. And then, of course, Rose is like, yeah, you know, I, I was kind of warning you guys about this. <laughs> yes yeah she does kind of say that she's like i kind of yeah. told you this was happening but you wouldn't listen to me yeah and then i like it's like what are we gonna do with this hand it's nothing but dead meat mm. <laughs> all right and then they just throw the hand in the flames in the fire yeah. yeah so rose is now sleeping 
All right. And she's all sleeping, and then there was the next morning, and then all the mom is talking about, to Rose about going to Granny's. And she's always like, you know, hey, you know, she was all saying, like, you think it would be a good idea for you to go to Granny's with these recent wolf attacks? She's like, oh, don't worry about it. I go to Granny's house all the time. I know where to go and everything. And she, my Granny loves me. I'm her favorite. And she's going to tell me more crazy stories. She does want to say she tells a bunch of weird ass yeah. stories. <laughs> yeah. So, so Danny's like, she's like, goes outside now. There's like a frog, like outside mm-hmm. too. There's a lot of frogs in here too. And so now she's like walking outside and it's kind of like a snowy area and she runs into like this very dapper looking dude. Okay. Mm-hmm. He's all dressed in like very old. He basically, he, look, he out of anybody looked like he was part of flesh God. Okay. <laughs> this guy. That did. guy did look like he was in flesh God. Yes. yes. As well. So he it was like, Hey, you know, I kind of lost my way here a little bit. But I think I might have found my way. And he starts flirting with her a little bit. And he was all like, hey, you know. Um, he's like asking her where she was going. And then she was like, hey, you know, I know a great place to go have a picnic. Let's go over here. Okay, let's go. I was like, damn, this guy's pushy. <laughs> so she just goes with him to the fucking pic- this picnic area. And he's all like, hey, you know what I got in my pants? Oof. I was like, okay. She's like, She's yes. like a little kid. She's like a teenager. This guy was a little creepy, man. He's like, you know, I got yeah, my path. I got this compass, and this compass is how I can navigate these woods. And she's like, oh, "Aren't you scared mm-hmm. of wolves?" He's like, "Why would I be? I have a compass." All right. <laughs> <laughs> he does literally yeah. say that, but that's pretty funny. Like, <laughs> I have a. Why would I be yeah. afraid of wolves? I have a compass. So now they're like, now he's like super like hardcore flirting with her. Yeah. Like he puts her on the ground and everything is about to kiss her, but she doesn't really want it. Well, I was about to say, I was about to say, he's a little bit more than flirting with her. He's basically about to like just yeah. throw her down and kiss like he, her. Like he wants to get it and going. Make out with her. Yeah. yeah. So like now he's all like saying like this game. Mm-hmm. Cause she, like, I guess the, the, the thing was like, it was kind of hard to, like they were talking like this, like fucking magical rid- riddles. You know what I mean? <laughs> kind of. Yeah. Kind of. <laughs> this fucking Harry Potter magical riddle crap that I never <laughs> understand. That's what they're talking like. So what I got out of it was the the okay. the dapper wolfman was mm-hmm. was saying oh, what as a spoiler oh come on like the, the, we don't know uh, that yet okay the dapper guy okay, may, okay who, who yeah. may or may not be a wolf at the time he <laughs> he is he is saying like hey I can get anywhere around these woods because I have this compass I bet I can beat yeah. you to wherever you're going faster than you can. And she was like, "Well, Even not, I don't know where you're going." Yeah, she's like, "She's like, no, no, you don't." Like, oh, well, I thought you were lost at the beginning, you know. It's like, oh, I wasn't mm-hmm. lost, but he's like, "Well, I, I was lost until I found you." I was like, "Okay," mm-hmm. and they basically do a bet, I guess, whoever can get to the granny's house first. Okay, and I guess this is when she, I, I, I swear that the rose realized that he was a wolf right here. Okay, so but then um, they're they're talking well. And that's the, a good point yeah and there's a bet going on where if yeah if, if whoever gets to the granny's house first i guess um if he does he would get a kiss from her so so that's a good point that you made and i like i like what you just said there and i, yeah. I didn't consider that at the time <clears throat> excuse me so she's talking about remember when the granny grandmother's talking about um, wolves with fur on the outside and, yes. and wolves with fur on the inside, right? Yeah. So I think so because of the stories that the grandmother told her, now she's figured out that this is a guy, this is a wolf with the fur on the inside. Yes. And she figures it out right here. Yeah, you're right. So the stories, as they're supposed to do, the stories yeah. warned her. So yeah, you're good, good, good point. So I'm a little bit confused by this whole compass thing, though, because a compass just gives you direction. Well, not to this guy. He also has a good s- smell. Remember, he's a wolf. Uh-huh. Well, true. He he's a wolf. He hasn't told her that yet. Maybe he's but, just like, really she happy. She knows where compass. she's going. She knows where grandmother's house is, Surprisingly. and he only can go in the direction. Well, yeah, sure. Right. She is a little lost. But um, anyway. So anyway, they're racing to grandmother's house, and if he beats her, then they then she, then he gets. Yeah, a but like it was it, it also too like I'm get, what I also what I thought too is like these wolves mm-hmm. are kind of like the twilight zone not the twilight zone the twilight <laughs> wolves you know what i mean they're, they're oh, like they're very okay. charming and these girls like you know like oh my god like remember what the grandma's saying like they'll butter you up and stuff 
And after they're done yeah. buttering your up and stuff, that's when they'll be very abusive. So you got to be watching that's, out. Yeah, and then they're that's when they're going to eat you. Because the guy, yeah. you know, he looked good. All right, you know what yeah. I mean? He was a good tap, dap. You know, he doesn't look good as yours truly. But you know what I mean? But he, you know, I could see mm-hmm. where he can get some uh, wolf ass here and there. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. For the time. But so, that's what they're saying, though. That's yeah. what the story is about, right? Yeah. The story is about, you know, yeah. you. All men suck. We got you. Know, yes. <laughs> like we like men are really nice at first until they have you, and <laughs> then they then they become complete assholes. Yeah, they're an asshole. Exactly. Right. Hey, it's never the woman's fault, brother. All right, that's a different movie. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that, that is a different movie. All yeah. Right. So now we have the uh, the dapper guy. He walks by like a dead animal, and I don't I don't think it was her dead squirrel thing, but it was a dead animal there. And he like takes the blood. Yeah. That's when we kind of like officially know he's a werewolf because he's like drinking blood and just blood on his face and shit. Even I could tell right away. So he goes up to the granny's door and he like fakes his voice. All right, so she like lets him in. I guess he's kind of like a vampire now. He has to be let in. Okay. And then the, the granny just like realizes right away, like, oh shit. It's like you can't come in here, beast, and stuff. Like they, they have, I act like they knew each other. All right. She knows the wolves. She's familiar. Yeah, she's, she's familiar. been around the block a time or two. So like, the they were talking about Rosie, and the guy's like, oh, don't worry about it. She, the Rosie girl didn't want me. You know, but I'm coming mm-hmm. here anyway. Then they like said some more riddles, and ne- next thing you know, they start fighting each other. Like she, she like tries to attack him with one of those uh, fireplace killer weapons from the '80s. Yeah, the fireplace yeah. poker. Yeah, yeah. And he grabs it, like he he grabs it right, and he just smacks her. You gotta tell me what. Okay, Your I don't really. Flies off. So, hold on a second. <laughs> hold on. Hold on a second here. So he 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 grabs it right, and he's getting burned, and then he just smacks her. And her head yeah. comes off, but her head is like a plastic, not even a plastic, it's like a, you know, like, what, what do you call it? Um, like a vase. You know, it's like the same mold you make out of yeah. a vase. Yeah, and it shatters, <laughs> right? It shatters. I'm like, yeah. wait a minute, was the granny like some sort of like clay machine or something <laughs> this whole time that we didn't know about? Was she? Maybe she was one of that things that hatched from the eggs. <laughs> 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 I'm choking. I'm choking on this. But so that's why I think the whole thing is a dream, right? Well, what kind he, of dream is this? He, I don't know. Whose dream is it? He hits. He hits the. I don't know. He hits the grandmother in the head, and her and and, and her head flies off, and then it hits the wall, and it shatters like it's made of ceramic or yeah. something. Yeah. Anyway, because in the Little Red Riding Hood story, he just eats the grandmother. He swallows her whole. Yeah, why can we have that? Like this one just smacks her around for uh, her head just spattered. Uh, it's clay. not as art. This it's, it's not as artistic as having her head smashed like clay. But yeah, yeah. So then Rose she shows up. All right, and then mm-hmm. the uh, the Wolf Man fakes his voice again, and then she comes in, and then Rose is like, "Oh, I guess you did beat me here." Yeah, better to better yeah. to why is your why like in mm. Red, Little Red Riding Hood? Why is yeah. your voice so deep? Oh, yeah. it's better to greet you with, my dear. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Better to greet you with. And then she's like, "What was the granny?" He's like, "Ah, oh, she's out getting some wood." And she's like, "Ah, oh, it's kind of cold out there. It wouldn't be very gentleman like if you would let the lady mm. go out there by herself and it's cold." And then they both like step on mm. her glasses, and they're like, "Ah, oh, shit." He's like, "Wow, what what big eyes you have." He's like, well, you know, mm-hmm. they're for uh, they're for looking at you better, all right. Mm-hmm. And then she's about to try to knife his ass. All right, it doesn't work. Okay, and uh, then he starts to like take off her coat, the red coat, and I guess he wants some wolf sex from her. Uh, then they yes. can hear they can hear the wolves in the background, and the the wolf dapper guy's like, oh, I love the company of wolves. I was like, okay. Yes, I love that line. That was yes. awesome. I was like, okay. So he's like, and then they then they start getting they just start getting like deep on each other, all right. Mm-hmm. And she's all like, you know, well, what it must be like, you know, to be like a human and a wolf. It's like, ah, you know, it's really tough. You know, it's like I'm I'm constantly in between worlds, of being a human and being a wolf. I have no home at all. You know, I just bounce between worlds all the time. And she's like, and then he like takes off his shirt, and she's like, "Oh, what big arms you have!" He's like, "Oh, no problem. It's good for hugging you." Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, and then, uh, uh, so now he's talking about like, you know, hey, by the way, you know, I won that bet 
that we talked about. So if you're if you're such a lady and everything, I should be able to get my kiss. All right. And she's like, well, yes, if I was a lady, I would be able to give you your kiss. All right. Mm-hmm. And then he's about to go for one. She's like, oh, what big teeth you have. All right. Uh, oh, no. Before she said that, she's like, well, you know, if I get this kiss, will I be harmed or not? All right. And she's like, well, you know, what big teeth do you have? And he's like, oh, yes. You know, better to eat you with. All right, then she mm-hmm. brings out his gun, and she's like, "Wow!" He's like, "Whoa, hold on a second." <laughs> you hold give on, me don't ba- shoot me. Yeah, give me back my gun. Then she shoots his ass in the arm. All right. And then we have a full moon. Rose apologizes to the wolf. All right. And during all this stuff, I guess the shot made the wolf man turn into a wolf now. All right. Yes. And why he turned into a wolf? Now the wolf is crying. Because he got shot by a human. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, yeah, kind of. Yeah. So now we hear a story. All right. Uh, and they they now we hear the story about a she wolf. Yeah. So Rosalie mm-hmm. Rose tells the wolf yes. the story about the she wolf. Yeah, the, yeah. the she wolf. So it was mm-hmm. a she wolf who who came from below and came above. Yeah. All right. And this she wolf. A, uh, didn't mean any harm, but harm came to her because the same thing happened. The sheep have got shot in the arm by like some local guy, and she wandered all the way out to the preacher's house. And the preacher was all like, "What kind of demon are you?" But oh, it doesn't matter. You're just some poor fuck. I should help you out anyway. Mm-hmm. And the she wolf from there, I guess, got the help that she needed, and she grew up to be a a 1980s stripper looking girl with wild hair. Walking around this dark forest naked for about a good half of the film, and she goes <laughs> for back. A good half of the film, I guess it was a couple of minutes. I mean, I kind of wanted a little bit more. She looked kind of good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, we, yeah. So okay, so in this story, you ever had sex with a wolf just, girl. I mean, come on. Well, not yet. But so okay, so what she's so what this story, this whole part of the movie is what the movie is actually about, which we'll talk about in a minute when we, when you get there. But okay. so this story that he's telling her is he's telling, she's telling him a story as he's becoming a wolf. She's telling him a story about a she wolf who was furry on the outside. And then, but and, and then she gets shot and then she, then she becomes human or she, yeah, she becomes human. And the, and the priest uh, thinks she might be a demon, but he's going to help her anyway. And then she lives with the priest for a little while, and then she decides. Then, but finally, she can't go against her nature anymore, and she goes back to live with the wolves again. Yep, down to the dungeon area. I guess they live down in the wells. Mm. Because that's where she went. She went down to a well. I guess so. Yeah, the, yeah, the wolves. She, yeah, she goes into the well yeah. for some reason. But it's a, it's a, it's a fantasy world. It's a dream world. So yes. yeah. <clears throat> so after all that happened, okay. Uh, so now we have Danny, everybody looking for Rose. All the whole town's looking for Rose now, okay? And they're they're going up, I guess, near Granny's house, and they see a wolf burst out of a window, all right? And then all the they run in, and the mom sees the wolf in that's in the house, mm-hmm. and the wolf has She's the same a wolf. What? She's she sees a wolf. Yeah, a wolf. Yeah, yeah, just one wolf. Yeah. yeah. And this wolf has the uh, cross necklace that I guess the mom gave to her. Yeah. In the film. And the mom's like, don't shoot it. So they're trying to shoot this wolf. And that wolf runs away. Okay. Uh, with the cross necklace yeah. still on. And the wolf's running away. And uh, we see a scene of rosing sleep. All right. And. And then we see the all these wolves or, or dogs running th- all throughout the old house. I guess it's the Rosie's house, in the house from earlier. It just looks uh, like yeah, it's very yeah, old as so. shit. It, they run up like five stairs, five sets of stairs to get to one room. And then the one wolf breaks into Rosie's bedroom and she screams. And then we get like this like never trust strange friends, wolf and all kinds of riddles. At the end. And that's okay, it. so hold on. So before we get there, so yes, so all that did happen. So, yes. um, so 
but remember though, there's one thing that you forgot to mention, and I forgot to mention too. So remember when she tells right before she tells before Rose tells her mom the story about the wedding, the Flash God Apocalypse wedding. Yes. So and she says, did and, and she asked her mom did if her dad was hurting her, and she says no. And then she says something, Rose says something about because men have wolves in them or something like that. And then um, her mom says in the very, like the line after that, she says, um, if there's a wolf in men, it meets its match in women and women too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So then, so, so the ending of this means that, so, so yeah, so, so men in this story are all wolves. But women are wolves too. Yes. If you get two right. Wolves so, together, like, what they're yeah. saying is like, there's not really any difference between what Rose becomes and what they're claiming that the men are. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, like, what what that what to me what that means is like so like they're they're you know there's men aren't the bad guys like everybody's the bad guy like they're both they're both equally guilty of everything even though. Going into this part of the movie, you don't you don't really see that. Yeah. Um, and then it ends with that um, where she's talking about like uh, I think she says something like um, uh, little girls. It seems to say, "Never stop upon your way. Never trust a stranger friend. No one knows how it will end. As you're pretty, so be wise. Wolves may lurk in every guise. Now is then. Tis simple truth. Sweetest tongue has sharpest tooth. So basically, what that means is, you know be careful of what people say to you because the people who are the nicest to you are going to stab you in the back. If you're not careful. Yep. Or people will say nice things to you so that they can stab you in the back. Yeah. Just like these wolves guys do. So, but yeah, but we did forget to tell that one story though. What we story? did skip one of the stories. <laughs> the one she tells about the, the, that has Terrence stamp in it. So the, the story uh, about, uh, about the boy, about Danny. Oh yeah, yeah. So he's walking through the woods. That's what after she tells him that. that uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, which doesn't really mean that much as far as like the story goes, but like, yeah. so he's like car. a kid, and this, yeah, and then the Rolls Royce pops up, and Terrence Stamp is in it, and he's supposed to be like Satan or whatever. Yeah, and it gives him some and like then, potion, um, love potion. He gives him a potion to make yeah. him a wolf. Yeah, but it actually backfires on him, and he turns into vines or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I totally skipped that because I totally forgot. <laughs> but yeah. it wasn't that important. But it was like it didn't do but anything. Yeah, like um, he just showed up like at the end of the film. Like he was yeah. fine. Yeah, exactly. So I don't know. Like I think this whole thing is a dream. And I think yeah. that it's Rose's dream in the real world, but everything in it happened after she went after that very first scene was her dreaming about all this. But I didn't think it was kind of funny though, because like there's like the scenes where the dogs are running through the house. Yeah, like there's several shots where the dogs stop and are start and are like playing with each other, <laughs> um, and instead of like running up the steps like they're supposed to, and they're just kind of like playing with each other, and then they'll cut away and it'll just happen again. And um, but yeah, it's like um, yeah, I don't know. I really like this movie, um, but yeah, I think that it kind of turns around at the end. Like you know, the whole thing is like you know. Men are the wolves, and I'm kind of pulling for the wolves through this whole thing because you know I'd rather go out and you know hang out with the boys than be at home myself. You know, yeah. Um, so I can relate yeah, to that. Right. I understand what where I understand what this means. I'd, I'd rather run with the wolves. Yeah, I'd rather be in the company of wolves than uh, at home by my you know with whoever I'm supposed to be married to or whatever. But um, but yeah, but you know, like um, Rose turned out to be a wolf too. Yeah. So, so there you go. Meets itself out. It, oh, is, the movie, it, is, it was okay, but like, I don't know, man. This, to me, it's probably just me, but the fairy tale di- dialogue, it just was never my thing. You know? Yeah, that's true. That's hard to parse. It's hard to get through that. Like, I don't mind like old, you know, ancient, you know, British talk. Like, I loved it on like Game of Thrones, you know, that kind of war. I kind of like the war British talk, but like the fairy tale right. and stuff, like, yeah, just not. Not my gimmick, but you know, but but I will admit that this movie was shot 
and this the 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 scenery of the town the wool i thought they all looked fantastic i thought they did a great oh, job beautiful. like the costumes yeah, look great so mm. uh you know even when people were acting the acting was fine you know it no, just to me like the fine. story was just like all out there like all this deeper meaning stuff I was like okay a little too it's, artsy it, for it, me it's but a- it's not bad it's very artsy. It's the most artsy movie we've ever done. That's a better mm-hmm. way to put it than I did. It's the most artsy movie we've done so far, I think. Yeah. So. Um, but yeah, it's very artsy and it's very like dreamlike. Like it's like watching a dream, which is why I think the whole thing was a dream. Yes. But yeah, but everybody, that's the company of wolves. Check it out. It's on Shutter. If you all like artsy Red Riding Hood, this is the one for you. But Allison, yes. what are some of the werewolf movies that we're going to be covering next week and for this month we, we did uh, got a couple of doozies on there yeah so we're gonna we're gonna reveal the whole thing so next week i've wanted you to see this movie since the day that i bought it oh. i cannot wait yeah baby. uh i cannot wait for you to see this is it I, wild I, you know what i mean i like the wild it's, it's wild yeah this is this is this is wild you'll either you'll either love this or you'll hate it i'm not sure which um this is kind of my revenge for making me watch uh, leprechaun Oh, come um, on now, brother. Leprechaun <laughs> is great. <laughs> so um, we are next week we're going to be watching a movie called The Beast and the Magic Sword. So it's a oh, werewolf okay. movie. It's a Spanish-Japanese werewolf samurai movie. Well, how, hold on. Does it have English? <laughs> it's subtitled in Japanese. Oh, fuck. Okay. <laughs> Listen, man, that ain't the that, that ain't okay for a note taker like myself. That ain't the easiest to do, but I'll try my best. Okay, it's it's also two hours long. Fuck. Okay. <laughs> this is gonna be great. Gonna I can't be, wait for it. A wild one. Don't tell me it's like all dialogue too. <laughs> no, there's a lot of action in it. All right. Well, that should be interesting. What was it called? Beast and the Magic Sword. It's called the Beast and the Magic Sword. All right, everybody. Well, we're gonna do that then. So, what what about the uh, the rest? I know, I know the final one we're doing, but what's the one? Um, yeah. So. Okay, so after that, we're going to do uh, Wolfen, which yeah, is Wolfen, a, yeah. I believe it's a 1980 werewolf-type movie set in New York City. Um, and then for the final movie, we're going to do the werewolf classic from 1981, An American Werewolf in London. Yeah, buddy. Can't wait. So all three of them should be pretty fun in their own way. And if it's a torture to maybe I'll break it up in a couple parts, that one. <laughs> Uh, you may need to break that up in a couple of parts, yeah. So, but uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, it's gonna be a wild month here on the Retro Blood, talking all these werewolves, all these classic tales of this furry demon beast. But also, too, we are gonna be coming with the lights out uh, this month as well. Uh, mm-hmm. If we get this movie watched, I might even drop it on Thanksgiving if we get it uh, dropped before Thanksgiving. We're gonna be doing that new movie coming out by Eli Roth, Thanksgiving Brother. It's a Thanksgiving horror Thanksgiving. movie. If y'all been listening to this show for a while, you know myself. I love themed holiday horror. I can't wait to watch this one. It's gonna be fun. So, but everybody, what are we gonna be listening to? Allison getting out of here, out of this company of wolves, out of this town of deadly wolves. What are we gonna be listening to from the queens? Right. <laughs> So um, I struggled over this. I didn't know which song to play at the end. I really want to play the last song in the first side of the album. It's called NM156. I love this song. And the people will too. Oh, yeah, brother. NM156. You know, that is actually the deadly gas that made Rose sleep throughout this whole movie. And that is why she... That's what Granny told me. She uh, she told me this story (laughs) about this deadly gas that happened... And when you when you when you take a little bit of this gas, you dream of wolves trying to uh, sex you up. But then you ended up as a she wolf, and you ended. Stay out and James Kind. Later, later, later. See you guys.